You have all power in your name, oh God. Move to every soul, everyone. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you. And we lift you up, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's lift our hands unto Jesus right now. Let's give him our hearts this morning. That's it. Hallelujah. Come on, would you just speak to the Lord from your heart? The presence of the Lord is in this place this morning. God is present. God is present to reveal himself in this house this morning. I wonder how many of you this morning have come to church this morning and you need God. You need God to speak into your situation. You need the Lord to heal your body. How many of you got something you need God to do in your life? Would you lift your hand? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at that. There's people all over this house this morning. If you lifted your hand, would you make your way down to this altar this morning? The only one that can do it is Jesus Christ this morning. Hallelujah. If you have a need, would you begin to come down to this altar? And would you ask the Lord to heal your body? Would you ask the Lord to speak into your situation? That's it. Come on down. Come down this morning. If you got a need, if you have a need this morning, Jesus is the answer. He's the only one. He's the only one. He has all power. All power in heaven and earth is in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Church body, if you don't have a need and you see a brother down here, brother, would you come pray with the brother? Sister, if you don't have a need but you see a sister down here, would you come pray with the sister this morning? Would you pray a prayer of faith over there? Come on, church body. Cross Creek. Come, come, come. Cross Creek. Come pay. Come pray for those who are down here this morning. We have sisters over here. We have some more over here. Come on, if you are full of faith, if you have the Holy Ghost, if you have the Holy Ghost, would you come down and pray for somebody believing in power, believing in power of the name of Jesus, that God can heal, that God would deliver, and God would set free. All across this house this morning, let's lift our hands unto the Lord right now. Let's pray for these needs this morning. Jesus, come on, that's it, church, pray to him, ask him, ask him this morning, ask the Lord to heal, ask the Lord to deliver, hallelujah, come on, all across this house, hands towards Jesus right now, come on, all across this house, eyes closed, hands lifted, mouths open unto the Lord, hallelujah, we believe it, Lord, cover this house. We plead the blood. We plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we pray for Sister Arcelli this morning. Brother Jean's wife, Lord, do a great work in her life. We pray for Nyla this morning, Jesus. Bless her on her birthday this year, I pray, God. Let your will be done in her life this morning. We're believing you, Lord, for exploits. How many of you are looking for God to manifest himself this morning? Hallelujah. I said, how many of you are looking for the glory of God to fall on this house? Then would you give the Lord some radical praise? Would you give the Lord a shout of worship? Come on, David said, oh, come, magnify the Lord with me. Magnify the Lord with me and let us. Let us, that's us, let us exalt, exalt his name together. For he is good. I said the Lord is good. And his mercy, his mercy, his love endures forever. Come on and bless the Lord as they worship together this morning. Hallelujah, come on, put your hands together today. God is here for us. Hallelujah, God. He wants to do a work for us. Hallelujah. And this song said that we won't move, God, until you come, Lord God. We won't go and we won't do it by ourselves. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you,
us worship. So we dance. So we dance. Come on, let's see you move your feet. We sing. We worship. We worship. You are king. You are king. All right, we give. We give everything. Everything to the one who is worthy. To the one.
Come on, worship him. There's nothing impossible for God. There's nothing impossible for Jesus. Oh, God, and if we wait for him, he'll do it for you. Nothing is impossible. Oh, God, nothing is impossible for him. If we wait for him, he'll work for us. He'll work with us. He'll show us and he'll lead us. Nothing is impossible. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, clap your hands. You know this one. You can help us out. Through him they can do it. Strongholds are broken. I am living. I am living. 
worship the name of the Lord. I believe that he will. I believe that he can. I'm confident. I'm assured that he wants to. I know that he wants to. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, worship the name of the Lord. Glory, Jesus. A special note, Pastor and Brother Michael are leaving for India. Brother Vogler is in charge while they are gone. Pastor is calling our church to three days of fasting and prayer, October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Please dedicate this special time unto the Lord. All Nations Sunday will take place on October 21st. Please come dressed in cultural wear. Let us celebrate the diverse heritage of our church family. Amen. Women's Conference is November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd at Antioch Church. The theme is Anchored in His Love. Register today. Finally, Friend Day will take place on November 11th. Please begin inviting your friends and family so they can have a life-changing experience in the house of God. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's a great day here at Cross Creek. Why don't you stand, turn around, shake somebody's hand, tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. Pastor would just like everybody to know if you have something pressing or an urgent need in our absence that you can call the church uh, every morning from 10 to about 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Sister Angela, my wife, will be here in the office. If you need uh, to get a hold of the church immediately, call the church phone number and Sister Angela will help you out. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This morning, as you all know, Pastor is turning 60 years old. Woo! So there's a, an old church song that when we sing happy birthday, so we're going to sing the church version of happy birthday. So I'm going to ask everybody to stand with us and let's sing to the pastor this morning. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May you heal Jesus near every day of the year. A happy birthday to you, a birthday to you, and the best year you ever had. One more time. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day. applause this morning shall we are you grateful for your pastor this morning come on let's make some crazy noise for pastor overton this morning hallelujah praise the lord you may be seated i'm very honored to be here in this special day uh pastor overton has a big 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 space in our hearts and uh, we want to honor him. You know, I'm pastoring the ILCDA, is the next door church or next time church. So for six years now, we have been sharing this uh, beautiful building with you. And uh, I have no words to express um, how Pastor Overton has impacted our church. So. Uh, maybe a little gift won't say anything, uh, but we want to present something to you today. And uh, I'm going to invite my wife and some of our uh, youth that are here. Uh, I know you are going to India. Uh, you probably 
will be uh, give a good use of some kind of money that the youth put together for you. But uh, just uh, little words. We were kind of lost six years ago. We were kicked out of uh, the building that we were using at that time because of our beliefs. And Brother Roberton opened the doors for this church uh, for us to hold services here. And since that, I don't think I ever seen uh, such a relationship that we have with Pastor Roberton. He is not only my friend, but he has been the angel of God to my life. Um, I can say today without a doubt, he saved my ministry and my church so many times. Uh, we are so grat grateful for him. And I hope this relationship will end and we will be best friends in heaven too. Uh, but I, we want to express to you also um, the friendship and the uh, brotherhood that we share. Uh, we love you all, and uh, it's good when every time we see each other, people say, where'd you abandon us? We didn't abandon you. We are always here. But it's, it's, uh, if I can say this, it's amazing every time we just walk uh, through these doors to feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Before uh, we have to fight so long to break down the strongholds that we find in the buildings we use. It's amazing to have apostolic church and the Holy Ghost resign in the place we are having church. So we are so grateful, Brother Overton, and uh, we love you very much. Uh, I, I have the words better to say this, but thank you. Thank you very much for your ministry. I don't know how people can get along with him because he's the best person. I, I say to my wife all the time, he's the best human being I ever met. He's an amazing pastor, an amazing uh, friend. Um, we are so grateful for him. Uh, I hope uh, he can get 120, 150, 200 years old. If Jesus doesn't come soon, he will be with us. Uh, Every time I hear these words in his mouth, retirement, I say, I curse that in the name of Jesus. I don't want him to retire. He is an amazing person, an amazing pastor. And you should be so grateful uh, to have him as a pastor of this church. Um, his friendship means a lot to us. And uh, we love you very much. Praise God. He thought he was going to get the mic, but not yet. From Cross Creek, Pastor, we want to say happy birthday. We have these cards that people have given to show you their appreciation. This, this is from the, from the church to show you our appreciation, but I just, want to, I just want to tell the church something. We're celebrating his 60th birthday. It's not old, not old at all, because I'm older than him, so I know it's not old. But if you think about this, if you don't count the first 20 years because he's growing up and living his life and becoming a man, he has spent over half of his adult life pastoring this church. And look what the Lord has wrought. Now, I, I want to I tell you something. I was not baptized in this church, and I was not filled in the Holy Ghost under this man's ministry. I was in this church, but not under this man's ministry. But you know something? I have matured under this man's ministry. And he wants every one of us. I go to, we, we have meetings every month. 
And this man's heart is after God. This man's heart is after souls. And this man's heart is to see you make it to heaven. Thank you, Pastor, for being the man of God that you are. We love you. And we appreciate you. And we want to wish you the best birthday. In Jesus' name. Thank you to the church. We love you. We are here because of you. And I thank God for everybody that's come in under my ministry and been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. No greater joy. No greater joy. I just want to say I love you and thank you for loving me in return. I don't know why I'm doing this other than I feel a little unction from the Lord right now. But when God called a man of God into the ministry, he called for the prophet to go and to anoint David when he was to be king. And I, I'm just trying to be sensitive here, Daddy. You know I love you. But I, I, I think it would be very, very fitting this morning for our church to anoint our pastor and pray over him. He's gone through half his life in this church, and I believe the next portion of his ministry is yet to come. Amen? So I want to invite you, if you would stand and stretch your hand towards Pastor Overton this morning. If the ministry can come, and Brother Tabars, help us pray for Pastor this morning. Would you pray for your pastor? Hallelujah. Can we just thank the Lord? That's it. Come on. Would you just thank Jesus this morning for the man of God? Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for you, Lord, having our interest in mind. Thank you, Lord, for our shepherd. Thank you, Lord, for the man of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You know that uh, for the last few months it's been pastor's desire to see this church debt free and I am believing that we are headed in that direction as many of you know uh, last month the month before we took pledges to pay off our church debt and we have uh, already paid off one of the three church notes that we owe to the bank amen God has blessed this church the Bible says without vision the people perish and our pastor has a vision, and I believe the Lord is blessing us because of that vision and also your lives for following his vision. Amen. There's a blessing on you just for following after your shepherd. Amen. So we have countless times gone over the testimonies, and, and I believe that the Lord is going to continue to do financial blessings for us. Amen. And so this morning, I want as we prepare to take up our offering this morning, I want us to ask the Lord. Amen. And we get into very ritual for me praying over the offering. Amen. But we're going to try to break some traditions around here. Amen. When we pray over the offering this morning, I want you to pray for your household. I want you to pray for your job because many of the financial blessings have come as a result of you getting increases on your job. God knows where the money is. The Bible says he owns all the cattle on a thousand hills. 
I had a need in my life, and I walked into the sanctuary one day. I was in need of $1,000. And I said, God, I don't have the money. And I began to pray, and he put that passage in my mind. He said, I own all the cattle on a 1,000 hills. And I said, well, Jesus, I need a 1,000 cattle. And sure enough, the next week came, and God provided that $1,000. Amen? It wasn't in my provision, but Jesus had it. He knew where it was at, and he brought it to me. My father loves me this morning. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise God. So would you lift your hands towards heaven? And would you open your mouth and ask the Lord to bless your finances this morning? Come on and lift your voices unto him and ask him the blessings on his way. I declare it in Jesus' name. The provision is on its way in Jesus' name. Lift it up. Lift your voices up to him. That's it. That's it. That's it. He got it. Oh, come on. That's it, church. Lift it loud. Lift it loud unto the Lord this morning. Oh, yes, Lord. Bless this offering as we labor and as we obey your word in Jesus' name. And let everybody shout amen. Amen. Come on and worship the Lord, and you can come and give unto the Lord. Let us worship. seated this morning. We're so glad that the Sunday school kids are ministering to us. Aren't they doing a fantastic job this morning? Those are angelic voices. Amen. We're going to ask Sister Allen and Sister Little's class to come at this time. They have a presentation for you this morning.
Sister Thomas's class.
Do you believe the Lord to be a way maker this morning? Hallelujah. Jesus never stops on your behalf this morning. Hallelujah. He always comes through. He always makes a way where there seemeth to be no way. Hallelujah. That's the power of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's in this house this morning. Hallelujah. Whatever you have need of this morning, Jesus, he never stops. He never stops. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you give the Lord a shout of praise this morning? He's my way maker. Hallelujah. Even when I can't see it. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord is good. The Lord is good. He's greatly to be praised. Amen. Praise God. Amen. This morning, Sister Thomas is going to come to introduce to you our Sunday school speaker for today. So let's give Sister Thomas a round of applause, shall we? Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. It is an honor, indeed an honor and a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord today. Um, I'm called before you to introduce the speaker for today. Um, it's kind of the fitting thing for me to do because I think I've known her longer than anybody else. Um, our speaker for today has always had a zest and a zeal um, for doing the things of God. Um, at the age of four, she came to our pastor in Memphis and pulled him on his pant leg and said, when will I be old enough or when can I give a word of impact? He said, well, let's wait just a little bit. Let's let you grow up. When other little kids, you were asking what they wanted to be, they would say princesses and firemen and different things, this person would look at you without a shadow of doubt and no wavering saying that she wanted to be a doctor preacher. She already knew what she wanted to do and that she had a calling on her life. And now today we get to see what I, you guys get to see what I've seen and watch what God has grown inside of her. It is my pleasure and my honor to introduce to some and to present to all my daughter, my love, my heartbeat, and this servant for God and the person to bring us a word for today, none other than Miss Oniata Thomas. Let's give her a hand as she comes.
Praise the Lord's name. I said, praise the Lord's name. God is good. And all the time, God is good. It is a privilege to be in front of you guys and give today's message. Um, I thought it would be easy giving a message, but now I understand what Pastor Overton goes through every time. It's not easy. It's a lot different than doing an exhortation. I will put that one out there because you've got two minutes here. You have to, when you're doing a message, you have to make sure that you're not saying anything offensive so you won't get a shoe thrown at you. But I'm glad to be here in the presence of the Lord. May I get an amen? amen. If you all have your Bibles, will you please turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. Verse 4. When you have it, please say amen. And it says, And there went out a chant out of the camp of the Philistines. There went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span, and he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armored with a coat of mail, and his weight and the weight of his, the coat was five thousand shekels of brass, and he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders, and the staff of the spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. You all can be seated. We're going to stop there for right now. So, as we can see, we are dealing with Goliath, one of the most well-known giants there are in the Bible, one of the most well-known villains we have in the Bible. And Goliath was a giant. And judging from the cubics and the measurements that they gave in the Bible, he was probably about, oh, I would say nine, ten feet tall. So he was a pretty tall guy. You did not want to mess with him. And Goliath was a champion out of the city of Gath, which is one of the five cities in the, in the Philistines region. And Goliath was an arrogant warrior at that. Because if we read down a little bit further, you're going to see Goliath goes out, and it's in chapter, verse 8. It says, And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said to them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine? And ye servants to Saul, choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then... Will we be your servants? And if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. So this is what Goliath was saying. He was saying, hey, you, you feeble-minded Israelites. Yeah, you. Aren't I a Philistine? Why are you just having your battle right here? Why aren't you fighting me? I'm a Philistine. Come on, try to take me. Come on, I can take it. Why aren't you fighting me? Don't you serve Saul? Isn't Saul your king? Don't you have an almighty God? Why aren't you fighting me? Okay, okay. But he doesn't stop there. He goes on further and he says, all right, I'll make a deal with you. You send someone out here to fight me. And if they can beat me, then we'll be your servants. But if I prevail against him, and I kill him, then you will serve us. Amen. So it was a 50-50. All, everything was on the line. He was putting everything on the line for himself, for his friends, and for the Israelites. He was just putting it out there. Goliath was arrogant, and Goliath represents the trials and the tribulations that we face in our lives, and that they seem so much bigger and that we can't face it, and we're hiding behind rocks, we're hiding behind tents, we're hiding behind stuff to try to protect us when we have God right standing right there saying, I'm right here, just take the step forward. 
But the Israelites were too scared because what they saw was this 10 feet tall man. But what they did see was there was an almighty God standing right there. If God's before you, who can be against you? But they didn't see that. They just saw the physical circumstance. They didn't see the supernatural circumstance, which was God saying, I'm right here. I'm right here. So there they Where are the Israelites? I'll tell you where they are. They're hiding behind rocks. They're hiding in their tents. They're shaking in their boots. And so is King Saul. Now, and I read this. I remember in my homeschooling, I mean, many of you know I was homeschooled. We did a math problem on how tall King Saul was. And King Saul was taller than Goliath. By a few inches, King Saul was taller than Goliath. And King Saul was hiding in the tent, hiding behind his men. He's shaking in his boots because he doesn't want to fight him. Now, we also have to remember, King Saul was facing, had two giants to deal with. The first giant was the physical giant that he was facing right now, which was Goliath. And the second giant was his personal problems. So he had enough stuff to deal with at the time. But, but King Saul was hiding. But we all know that that's not how it worked out because Haley, Riley, I got a question for you guys. Who was the person who came and challenged Goliath? What was his name, Mahalia? David. What? David. What was his name? Say it a little bit louder. David. Yes. David came. Oh, Out of the mouth of babes. Thank you, Mahalia. So we had David. David is a 15-year-old scrawny shepherd boy who just takes care of his dad's sheep. Yeah, and he's the future king. Yeah. Way to go, David. Exciting. Yeah. I'm excited. You can see my enthusiasm. <laughs> and he was asked by his dad, hey, David, I haven't heard from your three eldest brothers. Go to the battle, go where they are, go check on them. See if they're okay. Can you do that for me? He's like, sure, Dad, I'll do that. I'm good. I can do that. So he gets some supplies together and he goes and he goes to see how his brothers are doing. And he gets there and he sees his brother and he's like, hey guys! And they're like, oh hey, little brother. And they're talking and they're talking. And here comes ye servants of Saul. And this is David. What was that? And all he knew, I can imagine David sees his brother start running and hiding. He's like, what are you guys hiding for? What, 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 what's going on here? Huh? Why are you guys hiding? What's up with that? You guys beat me up all the time at home. Why are you hiding? And they said, just, just get, 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 get over here. And David sees coming into the valley this 10-foot tall man with this nasty, bare voice calling out and defying the name of God and defying the armies of God. And here are his brothers and all the other soldiers hiding. Hiding. Yeah. Great way to show you're very valiant men. Wonderful way. And he says, what, what's going on? And I can imagine one of the soldiers says, oh, man, this has been going on for 40 days now. When is this guy going to be quiet? 40 days? 40 days and 40 nights, Goliath would come out and taunt them and keep on taunting and keep on taunting and keep on taunting. And he would not stop. Because that's, and I can say it, how many of you, you don't need to raise your hand, you don't need to, Know a person that, that just won't be quiet. Don't raise your hand. Please don't raise your hand. I said don't raise your hand, Mahalia. <laughs> and you know that person, he just won't stop talking. And he won't stop clamoring. He won't stop taunting. He won't just, he just, they just won't be quiet. And you want something or someone to get them to be quiet. You want it so bad. You're like, look, I will pay you just Get them quiet, please. That's what was going on. Except 
They had what it would take. They had what it took to take on Goliath. But the thing is, they didn't have enough faith to use it to take down Goliath. So David's saying, 40 days he's been doing this. And he hears Goliath taunting. And he hears him defying. And he hears him saying things against God that were ungodly, not holy. And he say, why haven't you guys tackled him? How dare he speak against our God? We are the children of the Most High. How dare he? And this is what his brothers are doing. David, shush. Quiet. Quiet. And he's like, I'm not going to be quiet. I'm not going to sit here and let an uncircumcised Philistine make fun of my God. And that's what we have to do sometimes because people will say stuff. They will keep on and they will keep on. And they'll say, oh, God's a joke. God's not real. And all this stuff. No, you got to stand up and look that person in the face and say, I am a Christian. I am a child of the most high. But that's the thing. Sometimes we don't have that courage. Sometimes we don't have that junction to say, I am a child of the most high. Put some respect on my God's name. We all have that power. But we have the power in the name of Jesus who gives us his faith, who filled us with the Holy Ghost. He gave it to us, so we just got to step out in faith that he's going to tell me. And David, he just goes on. He's basically chewing out his brothers saying, why haven't you done anything? He's basically chewing out the soldiers. And it gets around to all the soldiers because it's a nice sized camp. And what's going to happen when you see three brothers getting chewed out by their little brother? One person is going to tell another person. Then another person going to tell another person. Then another person going to tell another person. And it's going to keep going. And it's going to keep going and until it reaches the whole camp. And it reaches the ears of King Saul. And King Saul, and they tell King Saul, hey, King Saul, there's someone who wants to fight Goliath. And King Saul's like, really? Great. Okay. Bring him out. Bring him here. Bring him here. Bring him on right now. So, and I thought about it and went, what did King Saul think David looked like? What thought would the person fighting Goliath look like? And this is why I came to you. He thought that David, that the person would fight Goliath would be... And no offense, Brother Jaheed, if you hear me, no offense, would be this tall man like Brother Jaheed, very muscular, very strong, a man of war, been fighting like Goliath had since he was about 15. Yeah, someone like that. But then in comes this short, scrawny shepherd boy. I can imagine what Saul's face looked like, can't y'all? It was not a happy face. He was not happy. And he's like, great, a shepherd boy, just what I need. A kid, this is just exactly what I need. And he tells David, look, kid, I I admire your courage. I admire it. But you can't take on Saul. He's been fighting since he was your age. You get promoted out there. But David wasn't like the rest of the soldiers. David believed in the most high, and David had faith. He had faith that he knew, if my God can protect me in the wilderness while watching my father's sheep, he can protect me from this giant. And he tells, and... Saul says, well, what makes you so sure you can take him on? What makes you so sure? And David says, oh, King Saul, while watching my father's sheep, a bear came, and he took one of my father's sheep, and I went after that bear, and I killed the bear, and I saved my father's sheep. And then another time, oh, King Saul, there came a lion into the flock. And he took another one of my father's sheep. I went after that lion. Now, y'all know, no, I would, if something, if the lion came up to you and took something from you, your purse, your money, your folder, your car keys, wherever it is, are you going to go after that lion? I'm not going to go after that lion, but David goes after the lion. 
And David doesn't come out scratch. He doesn't come out scratch. He doesn't come out hard. He came out alive. That lion was the one who died. And he looked at Saul and he said, it's the same God can protect me from that lion and that bear. He's the same God that can protect me from this giant. He's just another lion and bear. I can take him. And Saul, he's like, he, 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 this is what Saul is going through Saul's head. Okay, this kid may be exaggerating, but we've got nothing to lose. If he dies, he dies. Let me just prepare him. And he gets out his royal army and he tries to put it on David. It looks hideous on David. And David tells Saul, I have improved these. This is not what I wear. I do not go out into my father's field protecting my sheep in this. I'm going to go out the way I know I came out. I'm going to go out in the clothes that I am, and I'm going to face this giant. I don't need a sword and shield. I have my slingshot, and I have God. If God before me, who can be against me? So after many attempts, Saul finally said, Fine, fine, fine. Go on. And this is what he said before he went. Go, and may the Lord be with you. And David goes out there. Now, we're going to go to the Philistine camp now. Here's Goliath bragging to all his friends. Pastor Robertine, you don't mind me using you, do you? So here's Goliath. He's bragging to his friends. He's bragging, and he's saying, hey, man, I got, I got, I got so scared. They're scared out of their wits, and he's taller than me. I'm the man, aren't I? Yep. Thank you, Pastor Overton. <laughs> yes, I was Goliath, <laughs> and I'm short. <laughs> and then here comes someone saying, hey, hey, Goliath, guess what? Somebody's coming from the Israelite camp. Oh, so they finally sent someone to try to take me on. We'll see how long they'll last and bow with me. And all of his friends, what are they doing? They're laughing. Because Goliath is a champion. And here comes, and here's he's expecting someone about as tall as I am, quite muscular, covered in all this armor, to try to find him. And here comes a scrawny little shepherd boy with a slingshot and five smooth stones. Yeah, now we're going to, now I'm going to finish that part up, but we wonder where David got those five smooth stones from. He got them from the river. And the river, you couldn't just stand in the river and pick them out. No. You couldn't go to the road and pick them out because on the road, they're ragged and jagged. No, you couldn't go to the river because some are sharp and cornered. Others are smooth but have chipped ends. No, for David to find those five smooth stones, this is what David had to do. He had to hit his knees. And he had to get down on his knees, and he had to search, and he had to look. It wasn't just a five-second process. It could have took five, ten minutes. He's on his knees. He's finding those five smooth stones. What? He finds those five smooth stones, and he puts them in his bag. And he takes a slingshot. Each of us have five smooth stones in our lives. They defer. But there's one thing that remains the same, the slingshot. Our slingshot is the slingshot of faith. Because David had to have faith. And that slingshot is what takes down our giants. Every one of us face giants. Kids in school, we face giants as well. We face the giant of people saying, oh, you're ugly. You don't have anything. You're ugly. You take that stone. You have the word of God inside of you. You take the, the, the stone of the Bible. You put that in your slingshot. You roll it around. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knows right well, and you fire it. 
you let it go. You're having the trouble with your test, you're worried about a test you have to take or a quiz you have to take and you're afraid that you're going to fail it, you take, you put your stone a prayer into that slingshot and you whirl it around and you whirl it around. I will lift up my eyes into the hills for whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth and you fire that slingshot. You let it go. And that sling, that stone is going to fire, and it's going to knock that giant down. Amen. So David gets his five stones. He goes, and he faces Goliath, and this is Goliath. This is what they gave me? They gave me a scrawny shepherd boy. And if you look into your scriptures, chapter 17, verse... 40, it says, and he took a st his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a the shepherd's bag, which he had even in a scrip, and the sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare his shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the fields. Now, I'm sorry. Comments like that, it hurts. And it hurts when you get cussed out. Terribly. I know that from high school. These kids have no filter. None whatsoever. You bump into them. You better cover your ears. You're not going to like what they're about to say. But David doesn't run and hide. No. David said this. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the earth, and to the wild beasts of the fowls, and to the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Hear, O Israel, our Lord is one. One Lord. He's basically looking at uh, Goliath and saying, Goliath, you can talk all that trash. You can talk it all day long. But that's not going to scare me because I serve a living God. And this day, he's going to deliver you into my hand. He's going to destroy you. And all the world is going to know. All the world in Greece, in Athens, in Asia, in Malaysia, everywhere, they are going to know there is one God, and that one God is going to protect his people. And Goliath didn't like that, not one bit. He got mad. You got a 15-year-old telling you, oh, I'm going to cut your head off. I'm going to take you down in the name of Jesus Christ. If God before me, who can be against me? He didn't like that one bit. So Goliath charges at David. David takes out that slingshot, takes out his stone. He puts it in there. He whirls it around, and he hits Goliath in the head. And Goliath, from the impact, it causes him to fall. He's out for the count, but he's not dead. Because <laughs> some people would say, <clears throat> some people would say, oh, the stone killed David, killed Goliath. No, the stone just knocked out Goliath. He didn't kill Goliath. That's some of the things that we have a hard time with these days, and I am a per and I'm one of them. We take the stone out. We hit the Goliath, we hit our giant with the stone, he's out for the count. And we leave him. We don't take that sword out, 
and we don't finish the job. No, we just let him be. David wasn't like that. That same sword, get this, get this, that same sword that Goliath that I'm going to cut you into pieces with, David takes out of his and takes it out, and he cuts his head off. Every threat, every insult, everything that the giant or the person uses against you, it's only going to bounce back at them. It's only going to take them out. You fire that stone, and then you take that same insult, and you cut the head off of that giant. You take that same sword they threaten to destroy you with and destroy them. Don't let the enemy get the best of you. Because that's what Satan seeks out these days. He seeks out for someone who's weak. Someone who doesn't know a lot. Who does, who's new in the world, into, into the church. He looks for those people. And he plants those insults, those threats, things that will tear them down. And then when they run away, he's laughing. He's throwing a party. That's why we're here. We're here to make sure that those, that those new believers aren't getting the, when they get that threat, you're ugly, you're nothing, you're useless. No, in the name of Jesus, I bind you. Take that slingshot and let it fly. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am created by God. And he took out that giant and brought a great victory yes, that day. Yes, but there are other people in the Bible who face giants way before David. And the one that I thought about, I was thinking about it in the car as we were heading to church, and I'm praying, and I felt that the examples that I had of people who faced giants weren't enough, and I'm like, God, I need, to, I need another one. And it hit my head that night before I went to sleep, but I didn't think nothing about it. And that same example came back. How many of you know about Gideon? Gideon. Gideon faced the giant of insecurity. He wasn't sure if God really had chosen him. He wasn't positive. He felt that, oh, God doesn't need me. I'm just the youngest of my father's group family. We are the poorest in our tribe. Why would he want someone like me? He faced the giant of insecurity, but he had to take that giant out with the stone of God's confirmation. And my mom helped correct me on that one because I wrote confirmation of God. No. People can say all day long, Oh, sister, God's going to bless you. Oh, brother, God's got something for you. Right. And it can be a lie as much as I'm standing here. It can be a lie like I'm standing here. It can be as real as a lie like I'm standing here right now in front of you guys. But God's confirmation is when he comes to you in a small, still voice and says, I am going to bless you abundantly. That's God's confirmation. That's his confirmation. And what did Gideon finally have to do? Gideon had to take that slingshot of faith and put the stone of God's confirmation inside, and he had to fire it. He had to let it go. Another example, Queen Esther. She faced the giant of identity theft. No other as Haman. Haman wanted to kill her people, and she was a Jew. She had to have the stone of prayer and fasting. She had to take that stone, and she had to put it in there, and she had to let it go. She had to... He had to... Uh, She had to hit her knees three days and three nights and told Mordecai, pray for me, you and all the Jews, pray for me. 
three days, three nights. If I perish, I perish. And she goes before the king and he holds out his golden scepter. If he can do that, if he did that back in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, what do you think he can do today? This is something my grandmother told me. She said, if you can have faith the size of a mustard seed, can move a mountain. What can a whole lot of faith do? If one can put 1,000 to flight, two two can put 10,000 to flight, what do you think an entire church can do? That's what the enemy's afraid of these days. They're trying to raise up giants to try to take us down, and we're like, nah, uh we're not going down this way. We have our slingshot of faith, and we have God before us. We have our five stones, and we're going to take you down. David didn't just have five stones just for five stones. No, he took David, he took Goliath out with one stone. He had the other four for his four brothers. Because there was a champion in each city. Like I said, five cities in Gath, in the five cities in the Philistines region. He had five brothers. He had for the four other for his four other brothers. And we have to stay prepared, have our five stones to take out the rest of those minions, the rest of those demons, that Satan's going to ditch out on us because he doesn't want us to save those people. We are the church. And we are giant slayers. We are mighty. We are conquerors. And we are children of the most high. So as I close today, each one of us faces a giant. And each we all don't know what the giant is. I, and I don't mean to be rude, I really don't want to know. Because I have my own giants I'm facing, and I'm taking them down day by day. But if you're having a problem with the giant and you don't know what to do, it's time you come to the altar. It's time you hit your knees. And it's time you search for your five stones. And it's time for you to get that slingshot of faith out. And it's time for you to slay that Goliath. That Goliath. Time for you to slay it. It's time for you to take it. So if you're having a problem, will you come down to this altar and we'll pray for you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's all stand this morning. Hallelujah. I think the word of the Lord was very, very, very clear to us this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. The hand of God was on Sister Oneata this morning. Wasn't that very, very evident? Didn't she do a wonderful job? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We all face difficulties. There's trials and tribulations. Amen. But like she said, God is with us. Amen. David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. And that's where his strength was. It wasn't, I come to you in my intellect. I come to you in my pocket. I come to you in my own strength. Right? We war, spiritual warfare, and we fight not flesh and blood, amen, but we fight in principalities and spiritual wickedness and high places, amen, our fight is a spiritual fight this morning, my natural abilities aren't going to war against the spiritual things that need to take place, so I've got to go, like she said, in prayer. Any great man of God that you read about in the scriptures, they all have that in common. It was they knew how to call on the name of the Lord. And when you call and you touch God in prayer, what you lack in the natural, God supersedes in the spiritual. And he'll give you a power, he'll give you an anointing that you need to face that giant. And just like she said, the sling of faith and the word Amen. Those things combined together can be a a deadly weapon in the hands of a believer. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So church this morning, I invite all of us down to the altar. Would you all step out of your pew, make your way down to this altar this morning. I believe that the word of God was spoken to us today. And I want us to come 
in faith believing that no matter what obstacle we face, no matter what giant we're facing in our lives here today, that there is power after the Holy Ghost this morning. The Holy Ghost is what you and I need today. Nothing but the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not in my might nor by my power, but it's by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Would you lift your hands this morning all across this house this morning? Would you lift your voices unto Jesus? Because He's the only one that can give you the power over anything that you face in your life. Hallelujah. Moving in our oh, yes, midst. Jesus, give us strength, give us I power this morning. You. Let the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Come on, church, would you lift your voices unto the Lord? You Let Him hear you this morning. Working in this place, I worship you. I worship you. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. They call you way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are.